Hey, welcome back. Final day of Perry Nice. Admittedly, it ended yesterday, but you know, I discussed that in the previous video, so I won't go back into it. But so here we are into the final stage, the final 50 kilometers. Now, this race, of course, has had an unusual event in that it was a canceled stage, so and then further made unusual by. Or not unusual so much that nothing to do with the race, just my painting of uh, not painting the opening stage just because time is time and granddaughters need to be entertained, and et cetera, et cetera. So, anyway, here we are on the final one. This is, I always love what listening, you know. And, I mean, I don't want their job. Actually, it'd be kind of fun to be a commentator who paints the race as he commentates. But um, this is Woot Poles who win the breakaway was 45 seconds ahead on a climb before the big climb of the day, or the one of the two Cat 1 climbs, jumped clear of the peloton and headed up the road and it was like, well, that's not going to work. <laughs> Here he is. He's caught the breakaway rather quickly, too. And then, um, not as he caught them, but as this image will show, certainly, he's dropped them, like just sort of went right by. It was pretty stunning to watch. And the only guy who's been able to even respond is um, Oliver Nason, who was one of the original breakaway guys. He's actually in the time lapse video, the first painting of the day. Not sure you can really see him in that painting, but still, here he is trying to stay onto the wheel of the Dutchman as they twist and turn. What's the name of the climb? I have it here, the cat one, the Col de Pied, P-E-I-L-L-E. -L -L -E. I think that's how you pronounce it. My French is good enough to not be treated as a stupid American, <laughs> but not good enough to really converse. I, um, my uh, day job, as it were, is um, I bartend in a fancy hotel and occasionally we will have French guests and I can't, I can sort of, if I, if needs be, conduct the business in French, but my vocabulary isn't strong enough and it's been... 12 years since I've been overseas and more like um, maybe like 14 or 15 since I've been in France. So, you know, if you don't use it, you lose it, right? So just behind them here is a car parked on the road earlier is an incident it happens extremely rarely, but a car had managed to get onto the course. Probably pulled out of someone's driveway and didn't realize that the race was still going on. And so, um, it was kind of a scary moment where the peloton almost slammed into a car driving up the road and you could sort of see the driver inside of the car looking rather startled and chagrined I hope <laughs> although he as the bikes and cameras flew by you couldn't see the little apologetic wave
So as always, so that's the ink work. We'll start with the light color, work my way through the palette. Um, if I can even manage to pick up my paintbrush. And step A is always to make sure that brush is clean. I've done that because usually the last thing I do is, so I, like I say, I work light to dark, warm to cool. So the last thing left on my brush is off times the dark, the quote unquote black of um, the, you know, the final detail. So the brush usually has a bit of um, dark in it. And when I start again with the yellow, I end up with a nasty sort of color. So it's always making sure the brush is clean. <clears throat> I move the camera a little bit in hopes that you can see some of the color mixing areas to give you a little bit better idea of what I'm doing. And I know in the previous video, I kind of showed you the palette and the palette layout. Now I use the cake watercolors um, in this nice palette, nice contained case. And this is Richson Art that makes them um, the particular brand is the Yarka or yeah, Yarka St. Petersburg um, watercolors. It's a really nice set. These people make just great materials. I have been using their paint sticks, the Shiva paint sticks forever. And um, yes, I am sponsored by them, although that sponsorship seems to be relatively inactive now. But you know, COVID has been hard on everyone, right? Particularly anybody's business. So, but anyway, so they would send me, they have, you know, they would send me the paint sticks. And when I told them I was going to be doing, started painting the bicycle, and there was a chance I was actually going to go to the Giro d'Italia. They sent me these incredible watercolors. I was a little shocked when I looked up the price. <laughs> They're not cheap, you know, but quality costs, right? So if you want really good watercolors, and I had been using Winsor Newtons before this, before they sent them to me, but the colors are just so vivid, so super saturate. That they're just, you know, incredible paint colors. So I recommend them highly. They also sent me these great brushes the Stephen Quiller uh, watercolor brushes. And I've been using these from like 2015 and they are still just as um, they're completely intact. Like brushes will eventually wear away. I mean, look, we're dragging them back and forth across the surface over and over. But they're such tough brushes that they seem to have stood up to the uh, constant rubbing of the brush. I'm sorry, I'm trying to think and paint at the same time and talk. It gets a little confusing. So that's, I mean, I have long pauses in my speech anyway, but. I um, was made even worse by trying to figure out what I'm doing while I'm talking to you. So when I was a kid, I stuttered. And to avoid stuttering, I wait carefully, just like that, to f find the right word. And then, you know, 
my vocabulary has increased, so it's all that much more difficult to find the right word. Um, so, was, you know, we did the warms, now we're laying in the blues, and I'm about to switch over to the bushes. I'll start with the darker, sort of the shadow underside of the bushes first. Now that's got a lot of water in it. So again, one of the things you can get ways to control your watercolor. So, I mean, your, your variables are, of course, your ratio of water to pigment. So more vibrant. One second, folks. Yo. Okay, I'm in mid record, but I'm in mid record. What? Trying not to. I'm recording. <laughs> Clearly, my wife is coming upstairs, and little you know the classic husband and wife yelling up and down the stairs to each other. <laughs> so you can see how now I can bleed that in, and I'll come back and add just a little bit more dark to it. I actually, pick up some of my super dark. and lay it in. Now, of course, today, as soon as I finish painting this one, I get to go pick up my granddaughter from school. Now, this car is a particular color that I don't think I like. So now, and that's one of the things, you know, to remember is when people look at your paintings, they're not going to see what you're painting from. They'll have no idea what the original source material was. So now in the case of, you know, the cyclist kit, I can't really be changing that too much or you won't recognize it. So... But things like the car on the side of the road, it is sort of this turquoisey green, which, you know, I'm thinking about it would be a nice compliment to that red, so I may end up using that color. But see, that's the thing. So I can do a little bit of the palette control in the painting by using that transition. And here, I'm going to Pause this for a moment. Make sure my assistance isn't needed. So I'll be back in a moment or two. All right, back at it. Assistance provided. Now back to painting. So just mixing up a brown tone for the kid everybody loves to hate. I don't know why everybody hates this brown shorts of uh, AG2R. Got a little fuzzy on the end of the brush. There we go. But boy, they do. All right, so now we'll switch over. I'm actually thinking. But that color will work just fine. To use it a little bit just to give a little more depth to this foliage behind the wall. And now we'll take the um, deep purple and the deep green to make my quotation marks black. But 
I do that rather than using the black because it's just a more attractive color. It's actually color in black can just eat a hole in the painting. So just laying in these black details. I'm always intrigued by, you know, some riders wear gloves and some don't. I can't imagine riding without gloves. Now I go back far enough that when I raced and would train and ride the tubular tires, this otherwise known as sew ups. And tires are actually sewn, and so you'd be terribly worried about getting flats because they were a pain in the butt to fix. And so, <laughs> if you went over something you thought was uh, would stick in your tire, you'd actually put your hand down with the glove on it onto the tire and try to pull the glass out. There are actually these little contraptions made that attach behind your brakes. Back when brakes were caliper brakes and uh, would a little piece of plastic and the theory was it would knock off anything that would otherwise go into your tire because usually speaking when you run over something it's not when you first go over it whoops it's when uh, the subsequent rotations and you drive it into your, you drive whatever nail or piece of glass or whatever into your tire with the multiple. So if you knock it off right away, you're less likely to get a flat. Of course, that was about how long? Of, well, I've been riding forever, but that was back in the 70s. Technology has certainly advanced in the cycling world since then. And, you know, the super high pressure clincher tires, you know, standard, what most of us know as bike tires, give you the same um, lack of rolling resistance, higher pressure, so you, you know, you don't need the sew-ups anymore. Now they've gone to tubeless tires, which is a whole nother thing. I haven't joined that technology yet. <clears throat> Excuse me. Probably talking really quietly, too. So this is just about finished and time to remind you to um, love to hear your comments, your thoughts on what I'm doing. Um, of course, you know, if, if you subscribe, you'll find you'll get notifications on when I do my next painting. Because this race, this will be the last of this race series. And then there's a couple of one-day races I'll be painting over the next two months. And then maybe the Dauphiné, but definitely the Tour de France and the Tour de France series. So thank you again. Give a subscription. Thumbs up. Love to have your comments. Really appreciate. Oh, gosh, I've already forgotten his name now. Um, but the last guy I commented, we both started our racing careers and our love of racing on Schwinn's. I think a lot of people of a certain age, that was your first, our first bikes. So again, thank you all so much. Truly appreciate it. See you when I do.